Well, this is an unexpected live. I just was working on some things and I thought, well, why not bring you along? I'm here cooking a late dinner as normal. And uh, it's just one of those rainy and cool evenings and it just felt like some comfort food was in order. So I ran by the grocery store. It's my first trip since I have, uh, since we have been quarantined. I don't think I've gone into the real grocery store in a while. And if you're just jumping onto this live, say hello. I'd love to hear from you and see who's with me here tonight. I'm gonna be painting these lamps all the while I am cooking homemade chicken and dumplings. And I'm gonna take you along that adventure also. If you are someone who makes them and uh, you make your own recipe, everybody has their own way of doing it. But I'm gonna be showing you how to make dumplings and it's gonna be the old fashioned way. And I'm gonna be sharing with you what I have in that pot right there on the stove. If you can see that, I don't think you can, but I'll show you that. That is a full chicken that I'm cooking. And uh, I'm gonna be cooking uh, that until we are ready then to drop the dumplings. I'm gonna show you how to do that too. So this is gonna be a fun little adventure. And uh, if you like to cook and paint, we're gonna do both. While one's cooking, we're gonna finish these lamps. These are some lamps that I had in the upstairs of my house. And if you remember, you guys went on a little shopping trip with me. And these were for my uh, little carriage house that's kind of reds and greens and bright colors. And the only lamp that I could find in the shopping trip that I made was this jar, this shape, this kind of turned finial looking shape. And I bought a pair of these. They have a white shade, just a white drum shade, but they are kind of bland looking in the room. Now that the rooms kind of come together a little bit, these kind of just uh, are in the sad background. So I'm gonna give them a little life. I talked about doing this earlier, but I found something online that I loved. I bought a tassel for it and uh, kind of an unusual way to decorate a lamp, but when I found this red, green, and gold, and so on tassel, I had to buy it, and I'm gonna hang it right off of the front of this lamp. So with that in mind, this lamp really looks sad with this on it. I already had it hanging there. It was like every time I looked at it, I thought, too bad, great shape, but just not a pretty color. So what I'm gonna be using is Monarchy in our beautiful red, but first I'm gonna put on a base coat of Naples, and then I'm gonna go over that with this beautiful red. I'm gonna see if I get a pretty sunny color, and hopefully we'll be able to do a wet distress and pull back and share with you what that's going to look like once we get it all done. I've already given my paint a good stir. Got the lid off tonight. I'm gonna to start brushing on a coat of this. I'm not gonna be so careful to get it perfect because I'm gonna be rubbing a lot of it off but I'm gonna give these lamps a little whimsy and a little artful feel to them where right now they just look like a store-bought lamp. I'm gonna give them a designer touch, let's say. That's the best way to say it, something that you couldn't find in a store. That's something that's my own. I'm gonna personalize it to this room and I'm using again the color Naples. If you're new to our page, say hi. I'd love to send you out one of these free samples too. And like I said, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to make homemade chicken and dumplings and I'll have the whole recipe for you. Once this is over, I'll show you exactly what I do. And uh, if you want to try it yourself, it's a great inexpensive way to feed your family, a great warm and heart healthy dish. Well, let me rephrase that. I'm not sure it's heart healthy <laughs> the way I make it, but it is a fun little thing to make. And uh, my children love it and Craig loves it. So, and uh, of course, every time I visit my friend Tanya Tucker, I, she has me make it and she and I made it when I was just down there uh, last week and she always wants to make chicken and dumplings and she does all the cutting and cutting up of what I put in them and I put in mine uh, I put in them a pack of carrots which turns out to be uh, two cups of carrots diced up pretty small and then I put in two cups of diced up celery and it gives them believe it or not a great flavor they're pretty and they're not just dough and uh, chicken so I actually really like it. Her daughter is who told me and taught me how to do that, knowing I always make chicken and dumplings. She makes them as well, her daughter Presley. And uh, she started putting in hers the uh, little bit of celery and carrots, and I really loved it. So I continue to do that, and I've enjoyed them much better with it, actually. And everybody who likes them, even if you're not a fan of, of celery and carrots, it gives them a great color and a pretty texture and uh, you really don't see them, but it does flavor the stock really great, and that's the part I like. All right, so I'm gonna cut around all these little things. You can take these off if you're not steady with a paintbrush. Just take them off real nice so you don't paint your cord. I'm gonna get a little help from my kitty. She's always curious here when I'm doing something in this kitchen because she's looking for food always. And she loves when I cook chicken and dumplings because she smells that chicken and she always gets some. So that's what she's over here stalking me for. 
She's ready for that chicken. I'm sure you have pets that do the same, but boy, she knows that smell really quick. I'll get a first coat on this one, and uh, the next coat we're going over this with the beautiful Monarchy, so we can see if this will pull through and give us again that two-tone look and a little bit of a distressed feeling to them. And then we'll hang that pretty tassel back on them just to see how that's gonna look with a white shade once we're done. I believe there'll certainly be something to look at in that room versus just kind of a dead bland color that they are at, at present anyway. So this is a great way to personalize things in your home. This to me is the most fun. Whenever you have a room finished and you have all the bones in place, all the heavy lifting's done and everything's there, all the hard things that were you know, the most expensive things, the hardest things to get moved into the room, and you get all those things in place. Then the fun part starts with the accessories and doing the little things that really personalize a space and make it your own and using fun colors and going in and putting your personal touch on the details of the room are to me the, finally, the final steps that really pull together and again personalize the room and the space to make it look like you didn't just go out and buy it all in one spot. So that's the whole beauty of it. And doing little things with paint is the best and the least expensive way to do it to give you the most expensive look if that's the ultimate goal, to give you a real classy, like I said, a decorator look in your home. So paint is the key, is the element. So I don't have my true applicator out here. I'll just stipple a little where I see my paint separating. I used to stipple only with a brush until uh, uh, we made the true applicator. So it was always my go-to method to get paint to level out and to have no brush strokes when we're done and to get the paint to break the surface tension and to stick to any surface. So stippling with a brush can be done. It puts a little heavier texture in your paint. But on this piece, I'm not concerned about that. So you can stipple with a brush anytime you want. Just easier when you have the true applicator in your hand or even the little foam roller, both work great. So I'll give you a good example of that, where you can see here on the base, where you can see the dark color through, just by lightly stippling through the paint. All of that has gone away, and you won't see those striations in the paint any longer. And then that way, when we, if we do put on a second coat of yellow, or even if you were using something where you were trying to totally conceal the color underneath, you won't have to have so many coats to cover that. It's going to help you hide that quicker, and, uh, probably get you through with simply two coats, even using a light color like yellow. Yellows are similar to whites. They want to, um, they have less hide because again, they're not an intense color and it's harder for yellows to hide a color underneath in most cases. And here you see that. But it'll get, if two, cover, two coats will fully cover this color underneath. Let's see what we can get down here, so. We'll go over here and check this in just a sec. We'll check on my chicken and dumplings. As you can see, we eat dinner here really late. Everyone's so off schedule with this situation that we're in here with the virus thing. I know we don't even really have a schedule. What about you guys? We are totally off of our work schedule and everything. It's just, uh, we just seem to be just trying to get, every, get by, to get it through, to get done. You know, it's just, no one has a actual Anything out of the norm, you know, everything's out of the norm. All right, so there you go. There's our yellow. I'll set that one to the side and get my other one, but I'm gonna give these a stir right before I do. And I can't take you over there with me just yet. Just make sure my chicken's doing well. Let's see what we got. So I have a, a couple of different little tricks about about making chicken and dumplings, and that is how to make the actual dumplings and how to make them great. And through the years, I've learned the hard way and learned from other people how they made them great. And I'm gonna share that with you. So if you've ever tried to make them on your own, this is gonna be some good tips. I hope that you can crank this up. And even if you never made them or even never tried them, good thing to try. All right, so I'm gonna paint the little finial to match and I'm using the top of an ink pen to hold it so I can get in there and get around it well. Just making me a little holder for it so I don't have to touch it. Anything I could get to stick in there and hold and that seemed to be the easiest. 
Do you guys have a chicken and dumpling recipe that you use that you have a favorite for your family? Anybody got one? I put everybody to sleep on here. All right, so now I can't get it off of here without touching it. So there it goes. I'll touch him up. Let's see. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just touching up my fingerprints here with this. All right, on to the next one. And we'll do the same on it. If you have questions, please ask them here. And uh, tell me what, you're, what you've cooked tonight. I'd love to know. And tell me of any great recipes or any great things you know about chicken and dumplings that I don't know. Everybody's got a grandmother recipe, a mother's recipe, something that everybody uses that uh, you have your own go-tos. In my home, my dad was a great cook, and uh, that's kind of unusual. My mother was also a great cook, but didn't cook as much, but uh, my dad was absolutely a great cook. I don't know that either of them did a whole lot of measuring. I don't measure either. That's very rare. I measured tonight just because I know you guys are gonna ask me how much is that, how much is in there. And uh, for the life of me, I don't know, so I'll just measure, and that way I can tell you more accurately what I do when you ask. All right, so let's get that base done. And if you're new to our page, say something here, and I'll send you a free sample or a link to get yourself one of these, and it's enough to paint your front door or a vanity, or a good size project around your house, or even painting a couple lamps or something like that, just to give you a feel for the product and to let you see how it works. And uh, try it in your house. There's no smells, as you can see. I'm painting right here, in here, cooking, so. No smells, no uh, anything that you can't just wash out right over your sink with soap and water. I used Dawn on my sink to wash my brushes out and hot water. The hotter the water seems to be the better and the quicker that it will come out of the brush. So I just wash it and rinse it until the water runs clean. And that way the bristles down all in here, you wanna make sure you get all of that out so it doesn't harden because if you get it into the core and you don't get it out, when you go back to get your brush, even if it looks clean on the outside, that center core can be dried really hard. And if that's the case, most of the time, it will not ever loosen up for you. So be sure to clean it until the water runs clean. All right, so we're gonna keep going here and I hope that one will dry enough that we can get the red over the top of it to put the monarchy over it. And even if it doesn't, I'm doing it anyway, just to see, just to see what it's gonna do. Did you guys watch the uh, pottery that we've been doing lately with the water bath technique? This would be a great one to do actually for water bath, using it on a lamp. I hope somebody does the lamp. It would be really easy to do. I already have some pieces in the room that I did that to. If you remember the red and the yellow that I did on the vases there, they're right sitting beside of these lamps. So I don't want to make it match that. I want to pull the colors from it, but I don't want it to match. I don't want it to look like everything in the room has got the same finish, but I don't mind that they're all going to be in the same reds and yellows. Show you my pretty tassel what it's going to look like already look at the difference that this makes against that versus where we were earlier with that dull color in the gray they were pretty but they just can be prettier that's the best way i think i can say it they were pretty before but to make them really pretty and they're also sitting right in front of a white blind in that window both sides are sitting in front of a blind so they have nothing behind them except just dulls bill so this will jazz them up. Give them a reason to shine. All right, so onto the stipple. Can you see that? Swipe comments with your finger and just slide them right to the right. And you can see, you have to do it on your phone. Just take your finger and slide it off and that way you'll be able to see on anyone's live. So just stipple away. such a huge difference. 
I wouldn't recommend doing a big project with your brush, but just doing a little one like this, it's easy just to do with your brush. I'm kind of laying it on the side. It's not straight on like that. It's more or less on the side. That's how I stipple more, more than I do straight on. And you can see immediate results when you're doing it. So it's not like you have to wonder, is it working? You can look and see the result, how it's smoothing back. And you'll also know where you've been. You'll also know where to go back to, where to go back over. I know a lot of people wonder, why do you do that? What is the point? The point is very obvious when you're doing it. So once you start doing it, you'll realize that it is the best way to paint anything. I know a lot of people say, do I have to stipple? You don't have to do it. It's just a great method to help you be a better painter using, again, any type of paint, not just this paint. Now, latex paints are a little gummier and a little gluier, so if you're using latex, um, different ones are gonna act different. So rather than saying it's just a one size fits all, I'll say, in my experience, painting with latex paint has always worked better to stipple it also, so. It's not, um, it's not unusual to stipple latex. Enamels probably don't like stippling as much, but very few people I know even paint with those type paints anymore. Everybody I know paints with this paint. <laughs> Wonder why. I make them all use this paint. All right, so uh, keep going there. All right, we got that one looking pretty good. And hopefully we'll get this one over here so we can put some other on it. Maybe it'll be dry enough so it don't rub off. So I've got one more little finial to paint. And y'all know this is the finial that goes on top of the lamp harp here, right on top, it holds on the shade. So they were already in this same color, this bronze. Actually, they didn't match the lamp at all. Come to think of it. All right. Just take a little minute here to paint this. It would have been nice if I had a place to set these off immediately, a piece of styrofoam that I could just sit this right down in. That way I wouldn't have to touch it. And if I were doing a lot of these, that's what I would do. I'd have something I could just sit them down in or even start with them there. I don't have to touch it at all because every time I touch it, I'm getting my fingers across the top of it. All right, paint spatters up here. Let's see if I can touch him up here where I put my thumb on it and finger. All right, now I'm gonna go check on this chicken just a sec. The secret sauce to making dumplings is taking the liquid from your stock pot and putting it into your flour. That's how you make them and that's what makes it work. So in the stock pot, I already have a full chicken that I cleaned and washed. You can cut it up. You can already buy it cut up, but be sure to get the chicken with the bones. The bones are what make the stock. If you just cook chicken without the fat, without the skin and the stock, you won't have a rich broth and you won't have chicken, you won't have dumplings that have much flavor to them. Once you put that chicken into the pot, you cover it with water, bring it to a boil, and continue to boil it until the meat's ready to fall off of the bone. You also put salt, pepper, and onion salt, along with the celery and the carrots. I put two cups of each that were diced up small into that stock pot. I also put in a stick of butter. So that's where we are at this point. I'm gonna remove the chicken out of that pot. I'm gonna take that stock, put it into the dumplings, and make that up here in front of you. And I think I'll do that right now because I think I'm almost ready to get that in there. So. Let me move this over. And uh, have you ever painted with someone while they're cooking? I don't think I have. This is the first time for me too. <laughs> and there's 777 people who are watching this cook and paint. So hey, maybe this is a whole new thing, cooking and painting. It's my life, so I thought I'd just bring you along. You all might be doing it too. So while, I've, while I'm waiting on something to boil, I'm getting some painted all at the same time, so. Now let me move this. Let's see if we can get this going. Now 
here's another trick that I use so I don't make a mess in my kitchen. I make my dumplings right here in a cookie sheet with foil over it so I can just pick this whole thing up and throw it away. Even though this is a dough board, if you remove this, this is made for that. I don't want to clean that stupid thing whenever it's done. So I just do it like I said, I put it there and I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna get off all this paint real quick. Here's how much flour I have in my bowl already. And I'm gonna guess to say that's about three cups of flour. And I use an all-purpose flour. I'll show you what I'm using. That's what I grabbed at the store, gold metal. Now, if you don't, if you choose to use the flour that is um, a not, well, this is, because that's all-purpose, that means it's a not a self-rising flour. If you use self-rising flour, you'll have fluffier, fatter, uh, different texture in your, I like the dumplings without. <laughs> oh, my cat, she's so excited about the chicken. <laughs> oh, that was a squall right there, wasn't it? Well, you go, you go in there. I have to get mean to her right here on camera. She's going completely wild because she smells that. So now put down some flour onto your pan. Now, this is what we're going to knead in the dough into, right into this right here. You go. Put you away. So, what I'm going to do is take out some of the stock right here in my cup and pour it in this. This is red hot, boiling hot. I am no Paula Dean here, that's a fact. I'm gonna get this stirred up. Now this is gonna make a real loose dough. It's exactly what I want it to be because I'm gonna firm it up. Once I put it in this, I'll start picking up this flour and kneading it into the actual dough and that's what's gonna work the glutens up in, the, in these dumplings so we can uh, get them to the consistency they need to be. So this is getting, like I said, to be a real rough dough. So two cups of the liquid made about perfect, made about a perfect amount. Now you'll see there's carrots in there and celery, but they're cooked down. So really they're not adding any texture. You wouldn't bite in there and feel it when you ate it at all. So now you're gonna take out a big blob of this. Just put it right there in that flour. And uh, I'm gonna really try to get this paint off of me one more round here. Sorry. Okay, now we got it. Okay, so this again is very hot. So what you wanna do is just mash it into the dough and just let the flour kind of be the buffer between where your hands are going to touch and don't squeeze because when you do it's going to be pre warm inside but just keep rolling this back into the flour that you have in your tray and now you want to start trying to squeeze it just a little and just press and squeeze just kneading it just like making bread just keep turning it over and just like I said, keep your mess in this pan. Keep laying your flour back up on it. And just keep kneading it. And you can feel the gluten already working up in this. And these begin to get tougher. And that's the whole thing that makes a dumpling kind of good. Is I like them that way. There's different kinds that people like. Um, I don't know if y'all heard the old term slicker. <laughs> that's an old fashioned term that people used to make the dumplings flat and thin. And you can also what's make a, what's called a dropped dumpling, where you don't really, where you just pick up the dough and break it off like that and put it into your stock pot, which I like to make them taste exactly the same. And you can flatten them out, so that's, I do that too. But I also use my little roller and just do it the right way, I think. And I use this little gadget and it's just a nice little roller that you can roll it out. 
kind of get a nice even texture, nice even. So your donut, so your dough is all about the same thickness all the way across. And then I use a pizza cutter to cut them. So I do one batch at a time. That's what I'm gonna do. And let them have a good coating of flour on them because that's gonna help thicken up your stock and turn it into something other than a liquid water that it is at this moment. And I'm also gonna add back some milk into the stock pot before I put the chicken back in and drop the dumplings. I'll let that, I'll put the milk in there to bring it back up to a bowl. All right, let me get this out. This could get interesting right here. I want y'all to see this. If I get burnt during this moment, you'll see. Let's see what I have here to get this loose. Hmm. Okay, so there's all sorts of dark meat and breasts in here. Big stuff, little stuff. I'm going to try to get as much out as possible. I'm going to use a bowl rather than a strainer, but whatever's going to work is going to work. back to a boil and drop the dumplings. Before I do that, I'm putting in some milk to replace what I just took out basically. And let that come back to a boil. Then we're gonna cut these up. Can you see that? So just use your little roller here and just make about an inch and a half slice. Whatever you have works. Can't be wrong on this. And then come back across it, cut them into little squares. And that's your first root, your first batch. So you're gonna pick them up and again keep them pretty coated in flour. They won't they won't stick together if you do. And then we'll move on to the next little batch here. seen my cat act so crazy. <laughs> well, I have when it comes to food, but she's really acting up now. Okay, let's get the rest of this out. Have another small little batch here. And I made quite a bit of chicken. These heat up really well, and you can get two dinners out of this, basically, for a fairly decent sized family. This is country cooking. My grandparents owned a restaurant in the small town of Oneida, Tennessee. When I was a kid growing up, I rode my tricycle in their restaurant. And both my grandmother and my grandfather were great cooks. And they raised everything that they sold in their restaurant. They raised all the chickens and the pigs and the cows and they had a huge garden and everything that they did came from their land and then they cooked it and it was a um, what do you call that farm to table restaurant that's exactly what it was it was back in the day it was called the crystal cafe and people came from far and wide even the famous colonel sanders came in uh, which is uh, corbin kentucky where he was from quite close to here actually uh, was just up the road, probably 30, 40 miles up the road from Omega. And so Mr. Sanders would get out and visit local establishments that he had heard of. My grandfather was famous for his pies. He made a coconut cream pie that was great. And uh, of course, my grandmother, she could, she made fried chicken, she made chicken and dumplings, she made lots of stuff. So she had um, great skills in the kitchen. My memories of her are her cook, cooking, always with an apron, and always uh, making something. And we would go in the evenings. Of course, my mother owned a furniture store. And my mother and dad would 
work all day, and then we would go down to my grandmother's and we would eat dinner with her and my grandfather. And he had been on the farm all day uh, with animals, and he, I'm sure, got up at the crack of dawn to uh, take care of the animals and all that. He had help, and he had several men that lived there on his farm that would help him and take care of the animals. So it was, uh, looking back, well, entrepreneurial. <laughs> Very much so. So now that we have this little pile of these, and I think we're back to a boil over here. Yes, we are back to a boil. Let me move it. So uh, let me move this animal. Move, honey. Move. Move, Dawn. Go away. Go away. All right. I'm going to try to get you here so you can see a little better. All right. So the only thing you do once this is back to a boil is you flatten these with your hand and just drop them. Just be careful not to splash it up on you. And you smash them down so they don't get too thick and they'll all kind of cook consistently. Let some of that flour drop in this pot because that's gonna again help thicken it up. Always taste this pot because the salt here will seem to just go away and it's hard to salt these after the fact. So taste it for seasoning immediately as you're cooking this. Just get some on your spoon and taste along the way to make sure you have enough salt, enough onion salt to give it some flavor, and pepper. Those are the only three things that are here. Of course, the celery and the carrots are adding their own little uniqueness to it, too. So just kind of drop them. Don't drop them all in one spot. Just kind of move around. Drop them in different parts of your pot. And I still have this on high, it's still boiling just like it was. Or not full high, but a good, a good roll, roll here in this pot. I'm gonna use the whole thing. And I'm gonna stir it just quickly. If you have questions, guys, just ask them. Now that you know um, that I'm a cook. <laughs> and don't ask too much past this. <laughs> you can ask it. It don't mean I can answer, okay? I love to cook. I do love to cook. What I don't love is going to the grocery store. Craig don't mind doing that, thank God. He likes to go shopping somewhat. That doesn't mean he goes for everything, but he does go get the basics. He's not one to go get things that are outside of his basic realm, though. He'll get stuff that might not be what you want. All right, so the only thing left to do is allow this to cook down a little bit until these to get done. And... Uh, you could know that just by taking one out to see if it feels done. Test it, take a bite of it, make sure it doesn't taste doughy. And you can turn the heat down and allow them to sit here and simmer and thicken up. Or you can put your chicken back in, start it up, and eat it. They'll thicken on their own. I happen to like them that way, actually. I'm always starving for them by the time I get them made. All right, so that's a pot full right there. And uh, I'm going to wash my hands. And we'll finish this lamp now while that thickens. I do have this chicken covered, by the way, for the crazy cat who's here. Going insane for chicken. Hmm. All right, so let's move back to the lamp. Let's go back and forth here. coat of red on it. We got it. All right. Well, it's almost dry. It's not perfectly dry, but close. Close enough. Same goes. I'm just going to put this right on. 
get you where you can see. And I'm going to let this dry just a minute, and then we're going to go back and try to do a little bit of a wet distress on this. I may antique these down a little if they look too hot in the room. I'll show you the tassel on them again. How cute that's going to be. Let them get a little bit of yellow to shine through. And I could go back and dry brush them. I may do that. I may go back and dry brush some of the yellow back over. It just depends on the look I'm going to get right here. I'm not sure what it's going to do. That's always the fun part. Just the experimenting of it. Right now it's picking up a little yellow and it's getting pinky for me. Where it's wet still. So I'm not going to stipple this. I'm going to use my rag to rub it off in just a moment. See if I can get the look I want. And if you are new to our page, say something with a comment here, free sample, and I'll send you the link to join in our great group and chat with other folks that are using our paint and getting great results, doing all sorts of projects around their home, and this time of life, people are painting literally everything. It's amazing what people have been painting. Some things that are just blowing me away even. I mean, I see painted stuff all the time, but you guys have done some great stuff from motorhomes to obviously front doors have been a big thing. Um, of course, bathroom vanities always, people paint those, but everybody's brave painting their kitchen cabinets, they're painting their sofas, their chairs, um, just all sorts of things. I see outdoor furniture being painted a lot right at this time, pots, uh, planters, so on around the house, around your outdoor area. It's great, it works for exterior and interior, so you've got both options there. no idea I'm doing the live and here he comes. <laughs> He's probably thinking he comes in every night I'm doing live. <laughs> I'm cooking and painting all live, Craig. Cooking, now dumping. Why you don't answer the darn phone? <laughs> he doesn't really talk like that. <laughs> Oh, it sounds like, um, no, I didn't answer the phone. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank goodness it wasn't an emergency. <laughs> okay, so there's that. I'll show you this with the uh, tassel again. That'll be cute. This looks fire engine red. It's really not normally that red, but tonight it looks blooming red. This cat's been crazy. She's acting insane. She's been on the counter, everything. She's mad. All right, so let's paint this little guy. All right, guys, so I'm gonna finish these chicken and dumplings. And I'm going to, let me do a little rub back on this just to see if I can get it to do what I want it to do before we go too far into this. And uh, see if we can pull back this paint. I'm going to use this rag. Just a sec. All right, so I'll wet this just enough. It's not wet, but it's damp. All right, let's see what we're going to get here. Just don't want it to be pink it's going to be too pink for me. It's going to get that sunset kind of pink, pinkish yellow. Not what I'm after. Could be, but I would rather have dry brushed it, I do believe. It would be prettier. Just there on that little rim. I'll go back and do that, actually. I can see a little yellow, but it's just the red's too intense. It's so gonna go right back down to my brown, which is the gray color, which I don't mind, but it's losing the yellow. Let's see if I can just leave some of that and I'll go back and dry brush the yellow. Well, 
Well, oh, that's looking pretty cute. Maybe don't give up. Maybe just keep going here. Just dip it with this rag. Kind of soften up my rub marks. I could let this set longer and then done it. I don't know. I don't know. Just have to see it. Just have to see what you think. So there's that with white shade. Mm, don't know. Don't know. Gotta finish that up in a moment and get my hands clean. All right, guys, it's been fun watching, uh, what cooking with you at least, and hopefully I will have something for you to see in just a minute. I'll finish painting on these, and it uh, looks like my phone's about to die, and I'm gonna share with you the recipe if you're interested, and I'll show you what the finished version of it looks like in just a minute. I'm gonna take that chicken off the bone, put it into that pot, and it's ready to eat. I hope you have had a great evening, and uh, I'll share some photos with you in just a minute of both of these lamps and how I end up finishing them and show you what they look like. I can't wait to see you guys again. We'll talk to you soon. Good night.